continue our, continuing <clears throat> our journey through the Old Testament. A lot has happened since last week's reading. So here's a summary. You'll remember Adam and Eve and Sarah and Moses and David, who had been able to unite the kingdom. But after David's death, the kingdom was split in two again. And last week we heard about the kings Rehoboam and Jeroboam, King Ray and King Jerry. They started off the divided kingdoms, and kings and prophets came and went after that, and some were pretty good and some were not so good. And the people had fallen away from worshiping the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those prophets who tried to call the people back to God were killed. Robin read to you about the prophets Obadiah and Elijah and the fear of the worst king of all, King Ahab, who encouraged the worship of Baal and Baal's female counterpart, Asherah. So that sets up this week's reading in which Elijah will try to convince them to come back to the God of their ancestors. So this is 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 17 through 39. Listen to this reading and listen to what God is saying to you today through the Holy Spirit. When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, Is it you, you troubler of Israel? He answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you have, and your father's house because you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and followed the Baals. Now, therefore, have all Israel assemble for me at Mount Carmel with the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's temple. So Ahab sent to all the Israelites and assembled the prophets at Mount Carmel. Elijah then came near to all the people and said, how long will you go limping with two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. The people did not answer him a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I, even I only am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets number 450. Let two bulls be given to us. Let them choose one bull for themselves cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood and put no fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood, but put no fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire is indeed God. All the people answered, well spoken. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose for yourselves one bull and prepare it first, for you are many. Then call on the name of your God, but put no fire to it. So they took the bull that was given them, prepared it, and called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, crying, Oh, Baal, answer us. But there was no voice and no answer. They limped about the altar that they had made. At noon, Elijah mocked them, saying, Cry aloud, surely he is a god. Either he is meditating, or he has wandered away, or he is on a journey, or perhaps he's asleep and must be awakened. Then they cried aloud, and as was their custom, they cut themselves with swords and lances until the blood gushed out over them. As midday passed, they raved on until the time of the offering of the oblation, but there was no voice, no answer, and no response. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come closer to me. And all the people came closer to him. First, he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been thrown down. Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be your name. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. Then he made a trench around the altar, large enough to contain two measures of seed. Next he put the wood in order, cut the bull in pieces, and laid it on the wood. 
He said, fill four jars with water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. Then he said, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. Again, he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. So that the water ran all around the altar and filled the trench also with water. At the time of the offering of the oblation, the prophet Elijah came near and said, O oh Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your bidding. Answer me, O oh Lord, answer me, so that this people may know that you, O oh Lord, are God and that you have turned their hearts back. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering, the wood, the stones, and the dust, and even licked up the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord indeed is God. The Lord indeed is God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. With mornings that a lot of stuff happens on the same day. We've got daylight savings time and communion and we've got our stewardship dedication and All Saints Sunday. So first of all, as far as I know, we didn't have anyone show up here an hour early for worship, did we? Anyone show up an hour early? No. We all remember to sleep in I feel like it's easier now because so many of our clocks and watches just reset themselves. It used to be years ago you would have to remember to set them all the night before and it would be super confusing and there would be this anxiety over not being somewhere at the right time. There used to be a thing, some of y'all will remember, where you could call on the phone. You could call time. Y'all remember that? You could call time 
if you didn't know if your watch was right or whatever, it was just a number and you would call it and it would say 3.42 p.m. and that was it and that was the call. So I think technology has helped us in this way to know what time it is, that's a good thing. And it's interesting that Daylight Savings Time comes on the same Sunday that we celebrate All Saints Day, a day to remember people near to us or far from us throughout history, the great cloud of witnesses who have led us to this place. These people are timeless to us. We are bound to clocks and watches and rules set by authorities, and it's a great blessing to have a day designated for this remembrance, I think. So maybe at home tonight you can light a candle for someone you love. You can remember them, recall them, call them back into your life in some way just for the day. The people of the northern kingdom of Israel, led by their king Ahab, had failed to remember their saints. They had fallen away from the faith. They claimed their loyalty to God, but in reality, they were worshiping Baal and Asherah, who of course weren't gods at all. They had put their trust in falsehood, in a lie, in a big mistake. And Elijah, the only surviving prophet of Yahweh, figured the only way to convince the people and bring them back was to put on a heck of a show. So he stages a duel between Yahweh and the false god Baal. First, he challenges the people. How long will you keep limping around trying to follow two gods? Pick a side. And he tells the hundreds of prophets of Baal to get a bull and set it up to sacrifice it all the way up to burning it, but not actually lighting it on fire. Then they would call on their God to provide the fire, and certainly any God worth his salt could be able to do that, shoot down some fire from heaven and burn the stuff up. So they set it up, and they dance around for hours, and they call out to Baal, and they even cut themselves in the ritual they believed would get Baal's attention, but of course, there's no fire, because there's no one there. Then Elijah gets pretty gutsy, considering all his prophet friends have been killed for saying things like that, and he starts kind of poking at them. Hey, Baalites, where's your God now? Maybe he's meditating, or maybe he's off doing something else. One translation of he's wandered away is actually... Maybe he's actually on the toilet. <laughs> oh, I know. I bet your God's asleep. And finally, they give up. And it's Elijah's turn. And he fixes up the altar the way it's supposed to be, kills the bull, puts it up there, and then apparently just to show off, he gets the people to pour enough water on the altar that it soaks everything really well and runs off into the moat. And then Elijah says this, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and I am your servant. And fire comes down from the sky and burns up the whole thing, water, bones, and all. And the people believe. There's no doubt that this show, the taunting of the prophets and the drenching of the altar with water and the fire burning it all to nothing, that's a show that could convince people that Elijah was right. Lots of people would be convinced by that. But I wonder, too, if the words that Elijah used made a difference to them. He sets everything up, and then he calls out, O oh Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. And the people who hear the names would know the names, at least in the back of their minds. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. The God of our ancestors. The God of the saints. 
Their ancestors, they knew, had followed that one God for centuries. They heard stories about the mighty King David and his faithfulness and God's reward to him. They knew that they were supposed to be different from the other people because of what David's God had done for them, this God that brought them out of slavery. 